Howdy folks and welcome to the Hillbilly Kitchen. Today we're making pepperoni pinwheels. Well, tomorrow is New Year's Eve, and I know a lot of y'all are looking for some inexpensive, easy party foods, and this one is great. Now, there's a ton of possibilities, and we're going to talk about all the different add-ins. I mean, literally, there are endless ways to change this, and you can change it to suit your taste. But I'm kind of doing the basic recipe, and like I said, we'll talk about add-ins and stuff as we get to mixing it up. But the basic ingredients you're gonna need is an eight ounce package of softened cream cheese. I use a very generous cup of shredded mozzarella cheese, about half a cup of marinara sauce, any marinara sauce at all will work, and I have a six ounce package of pepperoni. I also have a package of 10 inch flour tortillas. I use the burrito ones, the big ones. I just think it's easier to make a few big ones then a whole bunch of little ones and they come out more even and prettier so that is basically what you need now you can make these tonight or you can make them tomorrow morning and keep them in the refrigerator uncut and wrapped up tight until your party starts and then you can pull them out as you're having the party and slice them up or pull them out and slice them up all at once or slice them up right before the party it's just up to you but this is a good one to keep people kind of snacking and keep keep down that hangry vibe at any party. They're good for New Year's Eve and Super Bowl parties and tailgating and picnics even, just all kinds of stuff. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna chop up your pepperoni and any pepperoni will work. Just chop it up. Um, you can use the pepperoni sticks, you can use sliced pepperoni, you can even go to the deli and have them slice you up some pepperoni. It doesn't matter. And the flavor of the pepperoni really affects the flavor of the hors d'oeuvres. So kind of pick a pepperoni you like. Now, I've already got half a batch of these in the refrigerator mixed up because you do want them in the refrigerator for at least 30 minutes before you serve them. So for the whole batch, though, you would have about twice as many ingredients as what I have here. And I'm going to start by combining my pepperoni and my cheese. And I'm going to kind of toss that with my hands because I want to separate that pepperoni that I have chopped up in little pieces before I mix in my cream cheese and my sauce. Just kind of take your hands and toss it together. And what, what this does is the cheese kind of helps keep the pepperoni from being in great big lumps and all your pepperoni being in one bite and that's what you're trying to avoid that's the whole reason for chopping it up and everything and you can layer all this stuff in your burritos but it takes a much longer time than mixing it up like spreading out pepperoni and putting it in a layer and spreading on the sauce and spreading on the cream cheese and all that stuff it takes three times as long. It would probably be quicker if you put your cream cheese and your sauce together and mix that up, but I'm kind of a one bowl person, so I don't generally do that. Um, I usually add them right into my pepperoni and my cheese at the same time and mix them up. <laughs> So if you want to make the cream cheese and the sauce a little bit easier to mix in the pepperoni and the shredded cheese, mix them together first. Okay, now all you do is you just mix this all together. You can add um, diced peppers, onions, mushrooms, olives, just anything that you like on a pizza, you can add into this and just add it into the mix right now and mix it up. I would dice them kind of small though, because once you get this mixed up, we're gonna spread it on our burritos over here. And it's not gonna spread if it's not diced pretty small. 
You can also add in um, a little pizza spice if you've got it, some Italian seasoning, some oregano. Um, you could even add in a little hot pepper of some kind if you wanted to. You could add in onion or garlic powder. Just whatever you want. And the more stuff you add in, of course, the more it's going to boost the flavor. A spatula works pretty well for this process. I like to kind of mash it and mix it. And that kind of spreads out that cream cheese nice and even. And it gets uh, the sauce evenly distributed in there. And it also busts up any more big lumps of pepperoni that you have if you kind of mash it and mix it as you go. But once you're pretty happy with your consistency, all we're going to do then is spread it on the tortilla shells. Out of the whole batch of this, I get about six. If uh, six of the 10 inch ones. Now, if you're using smaller shells, you will probably get a little bit more out of it. Also, if you add in more stuff, like if you add in peppers and onions and olives and mushrooms and all that kind of stuff, you're going to get more. So you might need as many as 10 shells if you're doing some of the add-ins. And bacon crumbles would be delicious in this. I'm a pepperoni bacon pizza person myself. And some bacon crumbles would definitely add flavor, texture, and just really make them better. Now, one thing that I do like to do is I like to trim the front and the back off of my tortillas. And that just kind of helps keep um, my, once I roll them up, it kind of helps keep them even. And it makes them a little bit prettier when you slice them and put them on the tray. Now you don't have to do this and you certainly don't have to throw this away. I mean, I know we're all kind of in times where nobody wants to waste food. But when you're using these big ones, the middle can get super thick and they're just not as pretty if you don't trim them off. So I trim mine. And then when I take them out, I'm still going to trim the outside edge off um, before I put them on a tray because those outside edges are not pretty. And that kind of is wasted. Either that or whoever's getting ready for the party ends up snacking on them, which I usually do snack on them. I don't generally toss them but they don't have as much filling in them and they're not as pretty. What you can do with these, which is what I did here, is you can just mix you up a little butter and cinnamon and sugar and spread it on there and then put them under the broiler on low for just a minute and you can serve those in a basket or a mug or even like a champagne glass or something, just as another little hors d'oeuvre. Or you can put them in a baggie and save them and make them for breakfast. <laughs> but that's a bonus recipe. Well, I trimmed them a little bit crooked here. All right, now the easiest way to get it even is however many you're gonna be making, spread out your tortilla shells and just divide your filling up. Now. This is just half a batch. The whole batch would do about six. You, and like I said, if you need more, you can stretch a batch and use all eight tortillas in a pack. Um, and I do recommend trying to find the sun-dried tomato ones or the um, spinach ones for the color they add and the flavor. Uh, right now, though, we're kind of lucky if we can find anything I had to go to two stores to even find the 10 inch shells. So this year, I guess get what you can get. But once you've divided it up, then you just spread it out evenly over your shells. I mean, it's not rocket science. And this is a, something that the kids could make. Um, maybe if they're having a sleepover, I know there's still a few days before school goes back. And it looks like in a lot of places, school is not going to be going back in January. Everybody's going to be doing online again this year. But uh, there's no heat involved. So it's an easy recipe for the kids to do. 
this is good for luncheons and things like that you know if you're getting together with some friends and you're just doing a light lunch maybe have some of these or this summer if you're getting together and you're just going to sit around on the back porch and drink some tea and have some refreshments these are good for that and they're good for appetizers at your cookouts too Okay, now once you get it all spread out evenly, the only other thing you have to do is roll it up. Now, I tend to go, I put a, the filling like all the way to the edge on one side and then leave just a little bit on the other edge. And I roll toward the edge that I have left just a little bit because you do want to kind of roll these up tight and your filling is going to kind of push its way toward that edge. So you do want to leave a little bit on the edge that you're rolling toward. And you just roll them up. No big trick, nothing hard. And once you get them all rolled up, then you want to wrap them up. And like I said, a whole batch will make twice as many. I have half of mine already in the refrigerator so that we can slice them and see what they look like. Wrap them up airtight. You can wrap them in plastic wrap. You can put them in a bag. You can put them in an airtight bowl. Doesn't matter. But you do want them airtight. If you don't wrap them up, the outside of your shell is going to dry out and get hard and stale. Now, after they've been in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes, that I don't know if y'all can hear that or not, but somebody's hunting dog has gotten in my yard and it is chasing the rabbits around the yard and yelping. <laughs> so if you hear something strange in the background, there's not somebody in agony or anything. It's a hunting dog out here yelping at rabbits. But anyway, once they've been in the fridge for about 30 minutes, the cream cheese is gonna be really firm and they will be very easy to slice and they will hold their shape once you slice them up and put them on your tray. That dog. <laughs> uh, I like to slice mine about a half an inch and like I said, you are gonna trim off that end piece. You know, it doesn't have much filling in it. And then just slice them. Now, if you do the cinnamon sugar, the only waste you'll really have is these two little end pieces that don't have much in them. And like I said, usually when I'm doing a party, I'm so hungry by the time I get to the point where I'm slicing these, I end up eating them so they're not wasted. But once they've been refrigerated and sliced, they look like this. And you can see the, the red shells and the green shells would add a ton of color, but they're fairly firm. They're easy to hold. You can serve some marinara sauce on the side so that people can dip them if they'd like to, or you can just serve them like this. It's kind of up to you, like whether or not you add anything into them. But lots of people do like to dip them. And if you were just having like a little lunch and get together and you were serving finger foods, I would definitely recommend having some little condiment cups filled with some marinara sauce so people could dip them or putting a little bowl of marinara sauce and letting people dip a little bit out on their plate. But they really are pretty, they really are easy. About 10 minutes of prep time is all you've got in them. And even if all you can get is the white shells when you sit them out, they have some color in them. Not a ton, but some. And if you added in some chopped peppers and stuff like that, they would have even more color in them. This is a really good one, really easy one. Lots and lots and lots of possibilities. Like I said, good for the kids because there's nothing hot. They just mix it, spread it, and then slice it up. And kids love having little finger foods like this. If they're having sleepovers, you know, this whole slumber party, Friday night, movie night thing, these are great for that. Save this one, give it a try, and endless, endless possibilities. Like I said, this is the day before New Year's Eve, and we are facing another year of very unsettling, uncertain times. And I cannot possibly imagine going through that 
without having the Lord in my life. And I want to leave you all with Isaiah 41.10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. In these uncertain times, I cannot imagine not having that peace that passes all understanding. And in this next year with the uncertainty, I am going to cling to that and deepen my relationship with the Lord because that is where our hope lies. And I pray that all of you are filled with that hope this year, that hope of knowing that God is in control, that He has a plan, and that He is working all things for the good of them who love Him. I pray that you have that peace that passes all understanding, that peace that comes when you know the Lord as your Savior, your provider, your protector, when you have Him as your strength. I want to thank you all for being a part of the Hillbilly Kitchen this year, and especially thank those of you who have been praying for me and my family through our very difficult year. And while things are changing and they will never be the same, we know that our Lord is the same, and we have each other and we do have love, we do have peace, we do have hope, and we do have joy. And a big part of that is because of your prayers. So if you haven't already, please don't forget to click like and subscribe before you leave because we're gonna be back next year with a whole bunch of new recipes for you. And we're gonna to continue to do our best to encourage you in these difficult times. Until next time, Happy New Year, God bless you all, and remember to put God first.